Alright, it is officially before us, cats. We are in the most shackled of cities, and as planned, we're not going to worry about the uh, the nonsense of recap. We've had a lot of talks before this. If anybody stuck around and heard any of it, well, you got the gist of what's happening tonight. So we're going to go right into this, and hope that's okay. Classic war drums. Danger Bung is approaching. You're not wrong. Alright, my friends. As discussed last time, the session ended with Ulheim and Jacob, correct? Correct. And where did it end? Where were you at? Uh, we were in... Our house. Yeah, outside the guardhouse. Yes. You were there trying to gather your equipment, and you wish to... Some of you wish to alert the guard captain, correct? Yes. That is correct. It was discovered that he wasn't there. His belongings had been mostly destroyed, tipped over, or scattered about the room. When you... How exactly did that occur? You, you went outside next, or what was your intentions? Um, Alheim went in to check Jared's office. Jared's offices and found um, that he was missing and his sword was actually bent over in half. Yes. Um, there were no guards about and when Jacob was looking for his gear he found the door to the armory burst apart and just nothing there. Correct. Uh, at that point a vampire tried attacking us and kind of without my 
own intentions, I had uh, reached out a Glabrizu claw and snapped its neck on. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where we left off there. Yes. Where is Rock? With Court. Correct. Where is the camp of the Blue Duke? Okay, the camp of the Blue Duke. And you had just got through speaking with <laughs> the Blue Duke. Yeah, Correct. he told us how he, he he basically said, "Hey, tell everyone that I'm an ogre mad guy. It'd be really cool if you did." I, I spread been really the news. Shy about it. Yeah, I've, I've been shy about it. So if you could just tell everyone for me, that'd be really cool. Okay. Those were his exact words. I'm okay. sure that's exactly how that worked. Yeah. Verbatim. <laughs> Nothing wrong is going to come from this. <laughs> Perfect. That's. This is fine. All right, I am going to. Make the map a work of art. Oh boy. I'm basically going to dictate what has began to succumb to the forces. Now bear in mind that this isn't going to just be as simple as guiding a single force through I mean you're, you're not fucking you're not Lu Bay, alright? This isn't Dynasty Warriors, and you're not gonna be a bunch of badasses just wading through the enemy forces and slaying thousands of them at a time you will have to be able to communicate with each other in some some fashion. Some of you might have access to spells, but the other forces that will need to hear you, or at least speak with you, may need to understand that forces have fallen or that certain resources are lost. You will need to be able to communicate, so you will have to elect parties or individuals that are fast enough or capable enough to move to an area of which another person is in control of, or at least you believe so. You will each have to decide if you're going to be operating together. If you operate with each other, your forces will be stronger, you will have a greater opportunity at success. If you decide that you will be oper operating without each other, your chances of success will dwindle slightly, but you'll have more ground coverage, if that makes sense. Now the way that this is going to be operating in the fields of combat, they are going to be trying to swarm the cell that is this city. Like a fire from the outside, their goal is to swarm and absorb the city. Your largest force of protection is the wall. But the wall has not mattered. They have gone over the top of the wall. Some of you have seen this very clearly. Your tip-off point was a particular demon general that said, Here they come. Prep up. Now, I would like to know exactly where we see everyone at this point. Is is Rock and Court still standing the... in the encampment? Yeah, pretty much, I'd assume. Okay. And we will see that we have Jacob and Ulheim at the guardhouse. I'm still in the bathhouse map. That's yeah. fine. That's that's fine. I'm, I'm just getting details, so... <clears throat> you went to the guardhouse, and you two went to the guard encampment. See. Si. All right, so you guys are all in the same exact area. Nice. Perfect. We have lots of coverage spread out very far. Disregard the immediate change on map. Things are going to look a little different, at least until I get... There we go. You've been drug over. Okay. You're on the appropriate map. Make sure you do your, your necessary zoomings. Um, I'm going to draw all of your tokens here. More or less, it's for representation of point. Delsa is going to be doing her own thing. And I'm going to drag your tokens accordingly. <coughs> Control. What side of the volcano are we looking on? Oh, I see. Yes, never mind. Okay. Zooming back in, taking us back down to player level. Now, admittedly, your tokens are quite a bit smaller than this, but I'm using it as a representative force more than anything else. So we have Jacob and Ulheim here. And upon this side, you're over here. You weren't even aware that you're operating within the same space. Okay. 
Things escalate immediately. Each of you have left or fled the location of which you so immediately desired. This brought you outside into the widened guard encampment. Each of these smaller buildings here are guard huts. It's meant to house around 15 or 20 men if necessary. Some of them obviously have less because half orcs also engage in these areas. They're quite a bit larger than the human men. Down at this end, you've exited just after the skirmish with the goblins. This is when the forces begin to descend. Screams mutter out from all sides of combat. Half orc and men dart from the buildings of which they rest from the screams. Some of them not wearing armor at all. Some of them just in their sleeping skivvies of sorts. We're going to do a bit of a round robin, but there's going to be a passing of time when we start getting into the main scale combat and you guys begin aligning your forces. Felsa went alone. Everything that Felsa did was in an effort to draw an allied force to fight with you and to eliminate some of this goblinoid threat. She's going to be doing her own thing. So what I'd like to know is, of the four of you, since technically you're not even really that far from each other, and all of you hear the same threat, what do you do? I would head to the Temple of Cord. I would assume we would meet up and touch base first. Well, we're not aware of where each other is. Uh, that having been said, uh, Jacob is basically going to fall into old habits and hang you know, hang low with Allheim. Uh, uh, Rock would be immediately rushing the origin of this sound. Okay. It sounds as if it is coming from this area here. It's in the middle point away from each of you. If you're moving in the sounds or the, the signs of where the audio is coming from, it's here. Each of you guys can control your token, correct? Yeah, so we can all hear this then. Yes, yeah, it's 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 audible. It's quite loud, very much available. Oh, then, yeah, we would make our way towards them. Absolutely. Behind rock, for the very least. Let's see what I can find. Well, I wonder what that's going to sound like. Let's go ahead and add it. That's perfect. Okay. Perfect. As they descend, raining forth, each of you begin to move forward, and the force moves almost as if you are experiencing watching Starship Troopers for the very first time. They move in a wave. It's not what you would typically see in the scatter, the fray of what a, a goblin attack looks like. This is like ants. They sweep up over each force. As an axe is levied, a hammer is brought down. Goblins are individually thrown, but as quick as they are thrown, they move up over and they begin to consume. The waves quickly begin to pass as these gremlin-like creatures continue to descend. The forces are before you, and as far as you can tell, they are immediately numerous. The four of you gather, and you can see at least the outlines of each other. Court struggles. Court, do you have a light of sorts? You're muted. I should have a lantern, yes. You should have a lantern. Um, I would uh, pop my bolstering ore on, and then I'll get into the fray and try to break up as many as I can with the channel positive energy. Okay. So we have... um, did you want them to make a save for the uh, bolstering aura? or? Um. 
Um, yes, they will need to make saves accordingly, uh, but as you saw last time, your Volstring Aura is not going to stop them dead track. Yeah. I'll put... One... Two... Three... Four... Five... Six... In place we have one... Two... Three. Got it. Okay. So the bolstering aura. Um, let's see. What is the what is the save they have to make? I believe it's gonna be it's twenty five because it's ten plus uh, wisdom modifier plus cleric. Got it. And is this a fortitude or a will save? Uh, it was a will save. Thank you. <laughs> Um, let's see, friendo. Three, four, five, six, seven, one, eight, twenty plus seven. And I'm gonna I'm gonna account for this in in waves of sorts. I'm not gonna make it just be one static roll for each of them. You said it was twenty two or twenty three. Twenty five. 20, oh, 25. Shit. Okay, so... Um, and what kind of damage are we looking at? Uh, this isn't damage. They take uh, minus three to attack damage rolls, armor class, and saves. As well I think as we get a buff class. off it. Yeah, and everyone that I consider an ally gets a plus of uh, those same modifiers. So it's plus to everything, minus to everything. All right, we're gonna actually have this operate in ways of ten. Okay, so one group of them manages to make their saves. Okay. So they don't—they don't have to worry about it, correct? Um, and then I'm gonna cast the uh, channel positive energy. Do you can you cast like additional spells, in in a round's worth? That's a free action. Okay. To do. No. Um, and then this is my standard action ability. So it's 18, and then they take 21 damage. DC is 18, 21 is the damage. Of Thank you. Uh, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, let's see. So, if they succeed, they take half, correct? Correct. And we got one more to try because it was even or odd. Even. And it's even? No, it's... Yeah, it's even. It's off uh, four. Their saves are reduced by... Are their... Yeah, their DCs reduced by three if they, uh... They felt the, uh... The bolstering aura. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. So, yeah. they passed. So I don't know if the... They failed, they passed, failed, passed, failed. So effectively half of them. Um, that first wave is just man-moding it. Let's see, so the damage off that is 21. So the way that this looks, you basically emit immediately this bolstering aura. What is the range? It's 30 feet? Correct. Okay. Um, you have guards that are beginning to pour out, right? You have this, this shack that is beginning to pour out, and... As many men as there are here, you know, there are multiple locations that have been stationed. As large as this compound is, it can't possibly harness all of the guards. You have guards that are actively patrolling the walls. You have guards that are actively patrolling the cities. So here, while the, this is a huge amount of men, it's not going to be all of them. And most of them are underprepared for this. So as you let forth this burst, you see bits of, like, flesh rend and burn off of their bodies if you technically saw some of their bodies, because most of the forces are immediately invisible. You would know this, Ulheim and Jacob, sheerly off of the fact that they were coming at you this way and you were defensively, reflexively, fighting them off. Score marks mark some of their bodies. Some of them seem to be unfazed. The guards are looking around for immediate threats and can only see some of them. Before they can even make attacks, their bodies are swept through and under. 
Oheim, you're very well aware that there is a certain visibility threat that is before them. Now, I gotta know now, what is Rock, Court, and Jacob doing? Do you parse and spread your, your effectiveness elsewhere? Um, I'm gonna base my action on the severity of the, I guess, screaming from the rest of the town. I mean, if this seems to be the, the place where the action's happening at the moment, then this is where I'm gonna stay. But if it sounds like there's perceptions elsewhere... Please, perceptions, the, the lot of you. Or would more than likely stick with, uh, with Rock for now. Until otherwise, uh, you said perception, right? Yeah. Can I get one more of those? Oh, I'm in the fight right now. I'm not... I would. I don't know if I'd be able to focus on. That. Maybe. I mean, you might be able to, but this is the point of perception. It's latent. Okay. Alheim, you're right. You are in the middle of the fray, and it's a bit difficult. But you can hear the screams of civilians outside of the sounds of the warriors around you fighting. The half orcs are fighting for their lives. A few people begin to make their way through. The blue duke begins to align himself aside you. Rock. Um. As I'll you give him the buff as well. Okay. Rock, as like you. I'll consider him. Gotcha. As you clearly haven't been able to mend yourself into the fray, you are going to start to make out the sounds of screaming from outside of the walls. They're cacophonously roaring, right? You you are already well aware that there is some kind of force that is upending the wall, and they are descending into Cauldron. The bowl of, of this is, is just being attacked from all sides. Most of your guard force is here. If you can purge the invisibility in some form or another... Your successes of succeeding, or your chances of succeeding, will drastically increase. So I know what Rock is doing. Jacob, Court. Now, out of curiosity, you mentioned invisibility. Is it just because of the low light in the area, or is it because... No, I mean invisibility. Otherwise, I would say that they're shadowy. Okay, so they are literally invisible. Yes. Uh, give me just a moment here. That's something I might be able to go ahead and assist with. Okay. Uh, just double checking. Court. You're muted. Still muted. Muted on both ways. Double <laughs> annoying. Can't get away. Um, so Court can see them because invisibility. Would I be able to hear them and judge where their location kind of is? Oh yeah, you you are lit, like you witness a half orc go down, and visibly yeah. before you, you can see bits of his flesh being rended away from his body, and he s begins to exsanguinate. Right, like his his body begins to He's shrivel being and drained shrink like a Capri Sun. Exactly, he is his body is being yeah. just shriveled. These um or non zombies, I guess these vampires have the munchies. Uh, so, Court might try taking swings at the the air where he would think there are goblins, so to speak, or rather, whatever, because he still hasn't seen goblins, but assuming that something is attacking, he would try to stave it off. Okay. Um, okay. So you're just going to go in and blindly swing? He would probably go for the ones on top of the Capri Sun currently. That... Okay, how are you going to swing? Uh, golf swing if he's on the floor, right? Sure. Trying trying to, at the very least, wherever I can pinpoint wherever there are, like, pieces of flesh being ripped off of his body. Presumably trying to strike in that vicinity. Have you ever put together a, a, a puzzle? Like a 500-piece puzzle? Yeah. Yeah. On like a, a, lot of pieces. a thin or a frail table, and someone accidentally drops something, and you see it kind of like goes, explode. It just bursts yeah. up. That's yeah. what's happening to this man's flesh, except it's not as drastic, right? Like it's just starting to tear away. This half orc is shaking and trying to break himself free of this, but it's just bits of flesh just being pulled and tugged away. Can I use pocket sand? You can try. <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't really well, have a... While, actually, hold on. While Court's going ahead and figuring that out, uh, Jacob is going to try and ascertain where the densest noise is coming from, as far as the goblins are concerned, and he's just going to go ahead and cast Glitter Dust. 
Okay. Uh, ping glitter dust for me if you can. Or share it somewhere so I can see it. I finally found someone, but that makes my life easier, too. Uh, let's see. Is this kind of just like a open round kind of thing? Uh, I mean, yeah, but it's still standard action. They each get an opportunity to act. I'm, I can't give you consistent, like, oh, yeah, burnable yeah, abilities while they're still just, like, looking on. And, of course, it doesn't allow me to go ahead and... I think that I have that Let's in my it. spell list as well. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. It's... I don't know why this... There you go. Oh, all right, so it's a will save. I'm just gonna throw out a couple. And based upon their negatives, so they're they're safe. They're, they're gonna fail. So you're basically gonna blanket the area. It is 100 feet plus 10 feet per level. So yeah, you're you're gonna you are going to coat this area. It's like. Fucking 200 plus feet of just glitter dust. Connor would be proud. It's gonna of you. work. Is good lord. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty so, much. It's pretty much this, this whole them. whole fucking area. So each square is 10. So 10, 20, 30. So five, 10. God damn it! Stop! Stop snapping! So, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Yeah, if you focus it on the area, you're going to hit this whole area, essentially. Nice. And as you basically cover it, you can start to see. So the way this is going to function is a, a cloud of golden particles covering the area, and everyone just inside of that. As this happens, we are going to see... All in the area are covered by dust, which cannot be removed and continues to sparkle until it fades. Each round at the end of their turn, blinded creatures may attempt new saving throws to end their blindness effects. Wait, this... this it blinds and reveals. So do we need to make saves against this as well? Yes. I'm reading that right okay. now, and I'm like... Oh. Yes. Plus and this three is a guys. will... It's a will save. You have to... It's a DC 17. Okay. Oh. Say plus three, Ronald, from your uh, bolstering aura. Correct. That's yep. the one I'm not good at. That. Uh, ooh. <laughs> That's the one ooh. I'm really not good at. Yeah, I fail. <laughs> got no luck rerolls either, at least not yet. Uh... So, unfortunately, um, let's get that will save. Jacob, come on, that's you too. That's what, 12 rounds? Does it affect him if he's smart enough to not cast oh, it on his face? He's, that's the thing, is he's not smart enough. They're not his spells. He's Say using that it for I the very first time. Too. Have you used it? Yes, I when have did you use, use it? Desert. Five, six, seven levels ago, when you didn't have this range. Okay. Let's see. Because if it comes down to semantics, you also blinded your allied soldiers. Oh. You'll resist. Alheim will succeed. Jacob will both succeed. The pastors do. Both the fighters are just like, oh god, my eyes. Court and rock are blinded. <laughs> at least short run, right? Like, you'll get saves at the end of every round? Uh, is that correct? At the end yeah, of each uh, round, each at the end round of your turn, turn you attempt a new saving throw, throw correct? Any okay. creature covered by this dust takes a negative 40 penalty on stealth checks. God bless. That's pretty hefty. The well, good news is, uh, because I'm blind, I'm gonna rage. <laughs> and start spinning like a fucking Beyblade. I hope someone keeps a list of the things that make you rage. It's basically just everything. Okay. I'll save you some time. <laughs> Rock's like, lights went out. Rage! You stub your toe on the bed rest. <gasps> How long will you stay in this area? Will you wait and weave through the entire, um, the the entire patrol? Are you speaking to me specifically? Everyone, everyone here. I'm gonna help clear out this area and then I'm moving to the Temple of Cord. Uh, once okay. I can, that is my plan. Once I can That's see I'm properly, I'm going to make my way towards the civilians and see if I can help them out since they aren't nearly as... Uh, apt to defend themselves. Court basically, would, yeah. Court would basically follow along there because he doesn't need to go to the temple. He's going to focus on civilians as well. 
Okay. Yeah. Jacob's going to move with Allheim once they've uh, kind of tamped down the threat here, or at least made it easy enough for our allies to uh, kind of hold the line before moving out and seeing what help they can do along the way. Because he doesn't know exactly where they're going, he just knows there's Allheim. Allheim knows what to do. Sure. This is going to be your longest siege. Moving downward under the city, it's going to take less time for them to start circling this bowl. You realize this much. However, you were able to knock out most of the enemy forces, but it's going to come at a cost, and this is where we come down to this. So, given the fact that there are the four of you here, you also have access to the Blue Duke, and the primary amount of in, uh, allied forces, your chances of losing substantial individuals here is low. So I'm going to give you a 15% chance of success for every major NPC and PC in the area, which is going to be Jacob, Rock, Ulheim, Court, and the Blue Duke. So that's 15, 30, you've got 60, that's 75% chance of success. And for the forces that are available to you, I'll grant you an additional 20% chance of success. You have a 5% chance of failing this. I am not choosing the number. Neither am I. <laughs> I'll do it. All right. Well, yep. I need a 5% chance range that you, you don't want. Out of 100 or? Out of 100, yes. Okay. Let's do 6 to 10. 32. You have minor force loss. That would have been real telling if we fucking land on that percentage for the first roll. The initial wave was caught unprepared. Because of your actions, you were able to down a force of 80 goblins. 80 goblins after Jacob's successes. The problem is, you lost 15 men in the combat. They lie, husks, on the battlefield. Most of them are half-orc. I would say about 80% of them are half-orc. So 15 men lost. 80 down. So I'm going to develop a casualties list. So we have... Gobs and good guys. Going down the course. So Gobs lost 80. Good guys lost 15. The sounds of combat continues to spread throughout the city. You know, the fact that you were here was detrimental to their success. If you were not, they may have still won just out of sheer numbers. But the amount of men that they lost would have been substantially higher. The ability that Jacob threw out, admittedly, in the first row, in the, in the first like rung of combat, was a bit wild. Nobody was really expecting it. On top of that, the power of this is something that I wasn't quite expecting. The, the birth of the, the burst of powder was surprising. So, now you're going to have a bit more of tantamount of control of it. You're going to have an understanding of how this functionally works when you cast it out in the open. Its range has been increased since its last use. The other guards are going to spend some time trying to watch out their eyes before they begin to move. Rock, you will rage. You said you get 30 rounds a day, right? Correct. I have used two so far, so I still have 28 remaining. Um, each of those is going to... They're, they're going to effectively last as two rounds. So for every round that you rage, it's the equivalent of two. So you've used four rounds. Okay. Sure. Just keep that in mind, um, because it's operating off of a time scale. Court. Give me a new save. A new will save. Remember, plus three. That's good. Oh, yeah, you're, you're able to break it. Very good. Yeah. You're able to resist the compulsion of the spell after clearing out your eyes, and though it's a little hazy at first, you can hear the carnage around you continuing to descend upon the town. But now that you believe that your main forces are solved, everything is okay. Ulheim, you've expressed that you wish to go to the Temple of Kord. Do you know where the Temple of Kord is? Uh, location 25... Um, on the map, it was near High Scroll, I believe, on the left side. 
No, it was mid sword. I got you. Up, I remember. This is 25 right here. Whoops. That's not gonna work. Let's try that again. And yes, that's where I'm headed. Um, before I leave, uh, I'll look to the group. We need to spread out. We need to find a way to to quell these to quell these vampires. Uh, I'll turn to the blue duke. Reassemble your forces. Burn the bodies. We can't afford for any of them to come back. And then Wolheim will uh, make his leave over to the Temple of Cord. Okay, Rock. What are you doing? Um, I'm going to attempt to uh, clear this dust out of my eyes and then run off towards the uh, civilians. Try and defend the, the lower rungs where the people live. Okay, um, which direction? That is a good question. Uh, where's the, where are the loudest sounds coming from? Everywhere. It's coming from the Everywhere. left and the right. As soon as you exit, you can hear... Um, actually, that's a... Throw me a perception. Right. 27. It feels, admittedly, a little louder off to the left-hand side, moving up to the northernmost part of Obsidian Avenue. That's where I'll be heading. Okay. Court. Uh, he would follow right behind him and probably, uh... Take the other road in Obsidian, or High Trumpet Street, probably. All right, are you taking any forces with you? Uh, probably the guards that we can grab along the way. Um, I'll call for a, a small group of half orcs to follow me. How many? Uh, six, maybe. Six. Uh, okay. So let's see. Let's see. Mm. <clears throat> 15. We said that it was going to be 5, 3, it's 15, and 50, so that's 1, 80, sans the 15. And you wish to take 6? Yes. 10 are going to go with you. Okay. What about you, uh, Court? How many are you taking with you? Uh, Court would probably see if he can grab, like, a few hands, maybe five from the camp, and then whatever he can grab on the way there. Okay, um, you will also take ten. Uh, Jacob, what are your plans? Uh, my plans are to ask the Duke where the densest amount of patrollers were in the city before everything occurred, and then direct him to try and reconnoiter, um, and then start Clearing through, you know, clearing through the streets. Um, you want to, you, you, okay? So you you want to ask the Duke where the densest patrol is? Uh, yes, outside of the guardhouse, where the densest amount of patrols are. Since I do know that there are some areas of the city that are more likely to be heavily patrolled, as some areas that are more likely to be lightly patrolled. There are a few individual uh, men that go out in the middle of the night, but most of the heavily patrolled areas is likely the Lord Mayor's residence. Um, there are a couple that, uh, a couple of the, the highborn houses that happen to have um, personal guards that they've established. They are not counting as allies in this until you force them or convince them to be an ally in this situation. But he tells you that there are on average three to four small uh, small groups of men that move out and walk the city at nights. Then, considering the fact that they're headed towards Sword Street, which is kind of on the way, he's just going to say to gather all the men and they're going to clear towards the south. Uh, try and just leave a defensible number at the uh, guardhouse, enough to go ahead and keep a beachhead, so to speak. Okay, how many men are you trying to take with you? And Sword Street is where exactly? Uh, you have it way down here. Okay, I've got it. You're right. Uh, you're basically right next to the Temple of Cord, right? So this is it? Uh, yeah, I mean, Temple going... of Cord is way down there. The one that Ulheim's going to. And yeah. I figure since they were going to go down Mayor's Way... Um, you know, those areas that are highly patrolled, he'll go ahead and take the blue duke and whatever okay. he can. Alright, so the blue duke, along with 
Jacob, and Ulheim. Your goal is to eventually break off, Ulheim. You want to go to the Temple of, of Lordly Might. Core, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to keep... I'm going to either... Uh, probably going to keep to myself so I can take the back alley portion. Um, seeing as they're attacking in the open streets at this point, I think a little subtlety uh, for this part would probably do some good. Okay. Um... So All right. I'm, I'm like right, like right when he, like right when you start getting towards Mayor's way, like the middle of it. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna inform him. I'm not just gonna just like ninja my way out. I'm gonna inform you that I'm gonna break off towards the back and then run my way back through, so I that way I get to a direct uh, pathway to the temple. Sure. Okay. So, the way that this so, is gonna work here, the way this is going to function is as you're moving, there will be micro skirmishes along the way. Until you meet an opposing force that has a greater number or a different, a different change, something that is essentially going to make it uh, functionally a little different than every other combat that we've seen up to this point, it's going to come down to a series of uh, rolls based on percentiles, like we did before, where you'll have a chance of success, chance of failure. So you break off. You see quickly as you move out, Ulheim, reaching through the city, trying to take to back alleys, that the alleys themselves are having these creatures move. You can see the, the grasses begin to break from them moving quickly. Uh, bushes are splitting and then rolling back together. They're everywhere. This The city is, is not safe in any direction. And if you decide that you wish to move alone, as strong as you are and as much as you believe in yourself, sheer numbers may overtake you because you will eventually run out of channels um well i'm not i'm not doing it immediately like i said i'm sure. gonna go more or less halfway if not a little more and then break off from okay all right so i figure i'll go ahead and take the blue duke and probably well how many do we have available 20 you're leaving with 20 you're leaving with them uh in in store, the Duke is going to take 20 alone, and then each of you will take 10. Yeah, that works. So you're um, going to have I a... break off, uh, Jacob will take my 10. Then. Okay, works. sure. Yeah. Uh, so that's essentially going to render uh, in the bulkhead of the guard, the guard captain's area, you're going to have 100 men that are going to be staying. Um, it's going to take them some time so that they can properly arm and armor themselves. And they will upend forces. Okay. The time that it takes you in between intermittent fighting uh, is not rounds. It's not six seconds. You're going to see that it's going to take minutes, ten minutes, half an hour to make it to the destinations that you wish. Uh, which would normally take about a ten to fifteen minute run down to the Temple of Lordly Might is likely going to take in about the ballpark of about an hour, hour and a half, yeah. In the meantime, you're going to be cutting swaths. So essentially, every 15 or so minutes, you're going to fight another opposing force. So we're going to take you down now, uh, and I'm going to move with Ulheim and Jacob. You meet your secondary force as they come in. All right, whereabouts? This is going to be at the break of High Street's corner, because of where each of you are running. I'm going to be moving the map around a lot. I'm sorry in advance. Uh, this oh, is about right. where you're going to be, and this area right here is where you're going to meet the next opposing force as you begin to break through in another uh, pie of the city. Now, you have a substantial force. Their forces did not drop much as they were able to best most of the guards on the wall without any losses. Your chances of failure increase. All right. Um, do we have any kind of forewarning as to where they're coming, direction, anything like that? They're I'm coming. Another perception. They're coming from. I uh, know you don't. You don't even need a perception at this point. Not all of them are invisible, but they're all moving essentially in the same direction. They're weeding through the city like they're eating on the outside of the pie. They're working their way in as much as they possibly can. All right. So as they start coming in towards our group, because you said that we're basically basing right at the corner of High Scroll Street, right? Correct. Uh, in this area, then, I'm going to cast Wall of Fire as they start charging. Okay. Ping me Wall of Fire if you can. If not, I can look it up. Look it up. <laughs> I don't have that. Got it. 
Yeah, I'm working off a screenshot of endings. Gotcha. Opaque sheet of flame that's 20 feet long uh, per level, or a ring of fire with a radius of up to 5 feet per two levels. And a mobilizing blazing curtain of shimmering violet fire springs into existence. One side of the wall selected by you sends forth a wave of heat, dealing 2d4 points of fire damage to creatures within 10 feet of it, and 1d4 points of fire damage to those past 10 feet, but within 20. The wall deals this damage when it appears to all creatures in the area. Uh, okay, so you're effectively trying to divide a, a wall. Good. I'm trying to basically put up a wall in this area that they will have to traverse to get to our forces and, you know, basically soften them up before they get to us. Sure. So the way and this I is going to work... if they are as bone dry as they are, perhaps um, set on fire. Draw your... Uh, if you could, please, give me a, a grid line, like so, and show me where you're casting this and about how far. All right. Uh, let's see. Also, is this one of your normal spells? Uh, no, this is one of... Thelsis. Thelsis. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so let's see here. I'm trying to remember how wide it gets. Uh, let's see. 20 feet long per level. It's, so it's pretty long. Be, yeah, about 200 feet. Um, considering that we are right here, I'm going to... Let's go ahead and pick a good color. I'm going to basically be cutting it right here. I just you um, just gotta use the ruler tool, man. You don't need to draw on the map. Oh joy! Alright, let me go ahead and see about erasing that. So your goal is to place it there. Yeah, I mean basically cover this area. That way they have to uh, kind of move this way through. Sure. I got you. Okay. Alright, so you're going to immediately cast the wall. I'm assuming, Olheim, that you're you're not there. Are you trying to move to the other side with him, or...? So, um... As, as, he, as he's about to cast it, um, yeah, I'll tell him, like, uh, this is where we split off. Don't worry, they won't find me. And I cast High from Undead on myself, and I get 10 minutes per level. Oh, wow, okay. Perfect. That's that's actually exceptional. Um, and you're definitely not going to resist it. And there's no way that they can break that either. So you have... Like, uh, like two hours that you can be invisible. Yeah. Perfect. You got it. And you immediately both cast this, and most of your opposing forces begin to rally in preparation for whatever comes over the wall. Um, from where you stand, Ulheim, which is fairly close to that wall of flame, it's going to cause a separation for sure, and some of the forces are going to stop and just go around, but it doesn't seem to stop some of them. Jacob, if you would, please give me 2d6. Oh, sure thing. Ah, five. Okay. So you know it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put a bit of a hamper on some of the enemies. As they begin to charge through, it takes a moment, but they the, the first frontal force will begin to come down atop you. And then after a moment, you'll see the secondary forces coming in from the side. It's going to be a bit more of a pinch point. So, Jacob, since it's you, the Blue Duke, and a force of 80 men. Excuse me. 20. and So 40 men, excuse me. Um, your chances of success here are not as high as in the camp. And it's going to come down to you. You and the Blue Duke will both offer 15. So that's 30% chance of success. Every 10 men will grant you an additional 10% chance of success. Alright, so 20, 40, 60, 80. Alheim, you're not in the fight. No, I'm saying his wall of fire is actually stronger. It should be uh, plus one per cast for that. Damage? Yeah. It's, it's not 2d, it's 2d6 plus, uh, uh, so a max of plus one. 
Okay, cool. So whatever your magus level is, I guess. Yeah, so it would be 2d6 plus 12, so that would make it 17 points of damage. It's fine. Yeah. I got it. We're not gonna we're not gonna worry about nickel and diming at this point. It's going to have its effect, and it's like everything's based off of percentages mostly. No problem. Uh, so they charge through. You have 15. Blue Duke has 15, and you have 40 men. You have a 70% chance of success without taking tremendous casualties. Jacob, give me a range. 30% chance of failure. Give me a 30% range you do not want. Uh, let's go with... Oh! 50 to 80. 51 to 80. Right smack in the middle. That's what I like. Tremendous casualties. Shit! The pinch point was not in favor of you at this time. You were able to best the frontal assault, taking out so many of them near the front, but when they began to descend on either side, your men and the Duke were not necessarily prepared. I need you to give me a 50% range, Jacob. Even or odd, in your favor. Odd. Even. <clears throat> Even. I need you to give me a 10% range, Jacob, that you do not want. 1 through 10. Oof. <laughs> I was so worried for a second. <clears throat> You're able to defeat the waves. 70 or 80 goblins descend in assault style around you. As they begin to attack, your men begin to fall. The fire offset their precautions, and more than anything, they were not expecting to see the undead spring from the wall of flame diving down upon you like carrion fowl and as they attack the men begin to cut swaths through them but not first without injuring the blue duke and you lost 25 men mm. so right. now your force is an injured blue duke yourself and 15 men I'm going to begin cutting that swath, but first, let's see how things fare for Rock and Court. Upper Side City, you enter into the next pie piece. Go ahead and move yourselves. Sure, north to Obsidian Avenue, please. About here. That should be pinging. If it's not, I can fix that. God damn it, I did it again. Let's try that again. I get you. There. About in that spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The arrow's just going to stay there forever now. <laughs> no, I should be able to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> Continuing your like move, you. you have the Beyblade and the Boy Wonder with a force of 20 men together. While Rock is an impressive driving force and Court is mostly unshakable, for at least the sake of the people that he cares for. Your chances of success are similarly adverse. Some of you have some resistances. Rock, you will add a certain experience to this. You're going to succeed in areas that Court will not just because of your natural obtrusive force. <gasps> I'm gonna grant you an additional 5% chance of success, whereas the others may struggle as such. So your chance of success, Rock, is 20, Quartz is 15, and you're going to get 10 for each group of men, okay? So it's 20, 35, 45, 55. You have a 45% chance of failure. I will not make this uh, this decision. <laughs> I, I have just as bad luck as Sniper. Let's go, uh, let's just go low, 1 to 45. Okay. Six. Just consider yourself lucky that this wasn't on Jacob's... That, that, that wasn't Jacob's pick. If that was Jacob's 10% range... Well, let's just say it would have been bad. <laughs> you take tremendous injury. Rock. Court. 
flip a coin. Who gets even? Who gets odd? Uh, I will call the last one, so I'll call this one uh, odd. It's even. How much does it take? You lose 20% of your health. Who? Oh. The goblins descend upon you, and the ferocity of the swarm is just that. You're able to swing and swing and spin and bring your malice down. But bites pepper your body, and they begin to drain life from you. And never quite stokes the coals, though. Your speed is cut, Rock. Okay. You'll be moving at a lesser force. Normally you meet at 40, but for all intents and purposes, you'll be moving at the same speed as Court. So 30 feet around. Okay. It's going to cut your movement just a little bit. But you'll succeed in defeating the swath. You need to stretch out those hammies more often. I'm drawing your pieces now so we can see clearly how much of the town has been taken. I need a will save from Court. I need a will save from Jacob. You keep asking me for the bad stat. Why can't you ask me for the good stat? Hey. Very good. Let's roll with the bad stat. Very good. You feel a compulsion fall over each of you, but you're able to shake it quickly away. Court from atop of one of the buildings, a child stands in a almost downstretched position. Its hands seem to move and its eyes glow, a silvery, fierce glow. Jacob, you feel this whiplash of will across your body, this compulsion to do things that you would not expect to be doing. But you're able to best it. You shake the fears. The children retreat. Allheim, perception please. Alheim, you will see this child leaping from rooftop to rooftop. Do you chase, or do you still go in the direction of the church? You said I see a child. Oh, one of the vampire children. Uh, would I recognize him as one of the ones that I had seen before? Have when you I seen them before? Yeah, they were eating the void dragon. Uh, yes, actually, yes. The They're dressed the same. They have the same style and look about them. It's one and the same. In which direction is she going? Oh, the child is running in the south southwest direction, in the direction of the Temple of of Holy Light. Then yeah, I'll follow. Okay, are you going to follow or are you going to pursue? Follow is, is just stay behind. Pursue is actively try to 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 get at, to make an oppressive action. Um, I'll follow for now, and then okay. I'll, I want to see where they head. All right. So the swaths have been cut. If they break away from the temple, I'll uh, I'll go to the temple though. Yeah, that makes sense, right? If they break away from the temple's direction? Yeah. Yep. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is, uh... This is gonna be rough. Okay. Rock. Your forces, while you have taken damage, you lost... Ten men. The goblins took eighty and eighty. You lost twenty-five men. It's starting to mount up. Ooh, doing great. 
You're doing, you're actually, you're doing surprisingly well, but things are about to change in the next round. Again, at this point, you've been fighting now for probably 20 or so minutes. Moving into your next swath. Rock, do you continue moving forward into the next piece? Like, are you following this around, round robin? Uh, yeah, I'm going to stay on the outer ring for now and, and continue to follow basically along the obsidian. Okay. Move uh, just south of Farmer's Way on the Obsidian Avenue. And this is when we move down to Olheim and Jacob. Jacob, where are you moving to? I can't hear you at all. Helps if I'm not muted. Hey. Uh, I'm going to basically follow the Blue Duke's directions on which homes and areas the densest guard would be at to kind of bolster our numbers and create hard points throughout the city. So I would imagine, just kind of looking at the map, um, we would probably be aiming for whatever this area or this area is. I don't know what this or this area is. Middle sword, high sword street, right around that. Okay, so again, like moving in the direction of the temple? Yeah. All right. So you're going to basically break down high scroll and move down middle middle sword around that area. Right. All right, I got you. Uh, that's going to have you descending into the town, a little bit closer to the bowl, mind you, but that's fine. Uh, Olheim, you continue moving past Mayor's Way. Correct? Uh, yes, I'm still following, but like I said, if they break away, then I'm going to continue on towards the temple. Following this point, Olheim, you notice that the swaths of goblins are actually beginning to thin out. The amount of them are realistically dropping. For one reason or another, you're not really seeing many bodies. You hear the sounds of combat, the chitter and the chatter of, of teeth, the screams of the people to your left, closing in into the bowl as it moves inward to the city. Oh, so they're pushing them inward, right? Yes. Okay. Um, seeing where the vampire child is at, are they still heading toward uh Yes. Alright, I'll keep uh, I'll keep going in that direction, following, uh, not, not uh, engaging just yet. Okay. You continue your follow. Alright. New forces. New rounds. It's where it starts to present a bit of a problem. And we're going to start with Jacob. It's going to be less of a problem for you. Your chances of success are not going to be as low as some of the others here. Yay! Jacob, it's you, the Duke, and 15 men. That's 15. 15 and 15. 45% chance of success. Uh, 45% of, you know, percent chance of success. Let's go ahead and call that, uh, 30 to 75. 30 to 75. Yeah. That's, that's a big one. So this is your, this is what you want. Okay, 30 to 75. This is your chance of success. In your favor, 30 to 75. Okay. Very good. Very good. You succeeded. Minimal casualties. Five men lost. Your men are prepared. The swaths managed to cut through the largest part of the weaker forces. The Blue Duke is starting to take additional damage at this point. And Jacob, you are as well. Take 10% of your health and remove it. So wait, is there any way to go ahead and not take any damages or losses whatsoever? No, that's how battle works. Your right. resources are lost, unfortunately. Okay, so 10% would be minus... Okay. Alright. So that'd be 13. Alright. You and the Blue Duke both take that 10%, but you keep ticking. Your men are now dropped down to 10 so your next round of success is going to look a little bit different, but your chances are still there. It's not completely failure. Down close to Farmer's Way. 
We have Rock and Court, the Beyblade and Boy Wonder, with his men. The men that you have left. How many men do you have? We're down to ten, I believe. So Let's it's... Oh. Unless, unless we can recruit some on the way. Yeah. Any perceptions from the both of you? Oh boy, I'm blind. Oh, that was a motherfucker tonight. Jesus. Yep. That's Rock. That would be like you do sometimes. That's You're guiding you court. You're leading your ten men, and as you enter into the next pie piece of the town in preparation for combat, what you see is a bit more disturbing. From where you are, breaking past this spot, I would say about here. God damn it, I keep doing it. You see something there. I say that you see this because the experience is a little vilifying. There is a swath of goblin vampires. There are three women that walk among them. You've never seen them. Court, neither have you. They surround a very large object. It's 10 feet at its shoulders. It's about 18 feet long, and it weighs about 12,000 pounds. Oh, well, this is a bad idea. I'm gonna Baby post Jurassic. it. I'm gonna post it in chat. Oh boy. This is what you see. Oh yeah, I don't like that. Can we hit the redo button? Control Z that. Can we? Can we double? What back was our last start save going point? Instead? Well then. In that case, uh, guess what's getting all of my attention? There are 80 goblins, three women, one child, and oh, fuck. the undead dire, dire bear. Kodiak bear. Yeah. Oh, fuck. god damn. We do. We do not win this fight. This is the worst start to a joke ever. This I, is. I this is say. heavy. This is heavy loss at best. <laughs> Oh god. Well, wait, you're a barbarian. Go ahead and do animal handling. Yeah, yeah. Hand handle his animal. Go for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just walk through the horde of goblins. What do you do? Part. Rock and court. Your men are very visibly shaken. At the sight of the fuzzy house moving, they don't know what to do. Um. Fuck. fight for our oppressors, my brethren? I suppose we're gonna just start wading through the goblins and attempt oh. to clear out the smaller ones before we go on to the bigger ones. Do you draw the oh. attention of them in some way? Um, do they seem to be paying attention at this point to us? They're actually taking guidance from the child. The, even the three women, the three adult women, that are walking alongside. Mind you, they are completely naked. All right. Are they rotting? Do they seem to be necrotic? Give me a will save. Okay. Not super happy about this. Just so you know. <laughs> God damn it. God fucking damn it. No Why luck. can't I roll higher than a seven? Still have no luck rerolls. No luck rerolls yet. No, they do not appear to be undead. They do not appear to be rotting. Alright. Uh, fuck, if they're taking orders from the kid, then... I guess I'm going to use a spring attack. Oh my god! I'm, I'm going for the kid. Crushing that skull. Oh shit. You have to cut through a wave. You know what? I, explain to me, in the narrative, how you see them... Mm -hmm. Descending behind this building, which this building is... It's a church. Oh, it's it's the destroyed church of St. Cuthbert. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what it looks like. Well, at least we know the area. That's good. Do you oh, charge you do. in with yeah, the well, unbreakable force that is here. the crusher of bones? Do you try to scale a building to get a leap attack? How does this look, narratively? 
I'm guessing that there are a lot of um, still there's still a lot of timbers laying in the wreckage that was once a mighty church. It's um, been pushed up mostly. It's been like street brushed to push up to the building itself before it's been dealt with. This is still a right. recent event. Right. Um, that being said, with the amount of debris leaning up against the remainder of the walls, uh, I'm going to try to use that as a springboard and give myself some height. Uh, Actually, to... um, granted the circumstances of your intelligence and the style of fighter that you technically are, give me a wisdom. Okay. Your perception is just high enough. Oh, we rolled off of the 18! It rolled off of the 18. It doesn't appear that there's an immediately advantageous point from at least what you can see. Your perception reveals that they are circling the building, but nay, sir. You are unable to see anything that looks advantageous to you. Okay. Um. Sniper, take your fucking dice back. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> You've cursed me. Um. If I can't see any direct way to get to the child uh, without having to deal with the rest of them, then I'm yes. just going to start cutting through goblins. So you are going to draw attention then? Yes. Oh, baby, a triple. All right. So the way that this is going to work is that I'm going to determine their chance of success versus what you employ as per a failure. Okay? Their chance of success is that they have the three adult women. They each grant a 10% chance of success. The child grants a 10% chance of success. The bear grants a 25% chance of success. Wow. Oh, shit. So 25, this fight, 35, 45, 55, 65, and they have a swath of 80 vampiric goblins, of which I'm going to grant them a 40% chance of success. So it's a 95. Or was it 85? Did I say it's 10, 10, 10, 25? I, I thought that was like 110 for what I okay. think. Was, I think that was 105%. 105%. <laughs> now, versus your force of 10 men, mm -hmm. and each of you, so that's 15, 15, and 10. So 105 sands 40. So you have a 75% chance of failure. 65. Is it 65? Yeah, if we have 40% because 15, 15... 65, 10. excuse me. 65% yeah. chance of failure. Correct. Do you... Are you prepared to go through this, looking at the sheer numbers? I mean... I don't know that we have a lot of options, so... I mean, on the bright side, it's a 35% chance of success. You, you're right. You can look at it that way. You got a 1 in 3 shot. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm taking the chance. Do we want to grovel for rerolls before we do it? You can wait. <laughs> you can send. You can remember. You can still send forces back to acquire more men. This is true. Um, yeah, I, I think in this particular instance, it's going to be advantageous to try to get as many people here as possible because we know so that there's follow, a, a very them and, and send someone back to get friends. Uh, yeah, if they're planning, if they seem to be moving through the town. Uh, if they're not going to be stationary in this one particular location, then we'll sort of hang back behind the horde um, and send the men back to to gather additional forces okay. wherever they can. You hang back watching the horde. Do you explain to court, or is this like a, you look at each other and you're like, no, yeah, we're like, you can't jump into that. That's yeah, you give a look like, uh, no. Uh, do you want to go first, or do I want to run backwards first? <laughs> okay. You stop, you pause, you take advantage of the combat around you, and you take for a hide so you can watch the threat that is. You send your men back to recruit more. How many do you ask for? Um, literally as many as they can find. Okay. Yeah, we're going to need a lot of them. If we can quell this threat, then we can, uh, we can start taking back like significant portions of the city. So All right. It, it's no, 